All right, folks, uh, the strange case out of Madison County, Missouri, on April 25th, 2021, black teen Durante Martin was found dead in the attic of a white man's house with a gunshot wound to his head. The homeowner is a man named James Wade, who is said to be a known white supremacist. The local coroner quickly ruled his death a suicide. After months of his family's questions and the completion of a second autopsy, an impaneled jury concluded that Durante's death was the result of violence, not suicide. It's been a year and no one still has yet been held responsible for Durante's death. The family wants the Department of Justice to get involved in finding out what happened to Durante Martin. Katie Ryan is the chief of staff for Campaign Zero and Erica Lotz is Durante Martin's mother. Uh, they join us now to break down this uh, quite disturbing story. Um, for, for, first off, uh, let, let me and the, let me ask you this, Erica. Yeah. So, did Durante know this man, James Wade? No, he did not know James Wade. Okay, so so Durant, Durante doesn't know this guy. So, how in the world did Durante end up in the guy's attic? Durante went to the house with a friend of his who lived there at the house. Okay, so so a friend of Durante's lives at this house. Is is Durante's friend related to James Wade? Um, I'm not sure of the exact um, relationship between um, and James Wade. Uh, uh, Katie, do you know? Yeah, actually, so this is, Roland, first of all, thank you so much for elevating this story. Um, it is exceptionally disturbing. And as you suggested earlier, we have far more questions than answers. So a lot of the questions that you're asking off the jump are quite a few of what we need answered. The real timeline of Durante's death actually started last year, April 22nd, 2021, where um, in which was a day that Durante actually had surgery on his hand. So he had a broken arm, had surgery. He was in a cast in his right arm, dominant hand, right hand to wrist or hand to elbow rather. And two days later, we know that he went with a peer, a group of peers who took him to a party that was occurring at the home of James Wade. James Wade, as you said, is a known white supremacist. He's an individual who prominently hangs a Confederate flag from his front porch, has a Facebook profile riddled with racist jokes and memes. Uh, Durante, as one would expect at a home of a white, suprem white supremacist, was the only black individual at the party. The party was, uh, all the other attendees were white. That was on April the 24th. What we know, uh, to that point is then at three o'clock in the morning um, is when Durante's body was found in the attic in sort of like a makeshift closet of the home of James Wade. Um, and we have the 911 call that James Wade made very calmly uh, to local police to say, apparently a guy just shot himself in my attic. Um, and in fact, we have the audio of that 911 call if you want it um, for anyone interested on our justiceforderante.com site. Um, that is the timeline of his death. And then, of course, there is a series of subsequent um, happenings that make this case even more bizarre um, and have been barriers to accountability. Was there any type of investigation by authorities? Well, um, what we know is that after Durante was found dead, no authorities contacted Ms. Lotz about her son's death. Uh, it, within 24 hours of his killing, a coroner had already conducted an autopsy, embalmed his body without uh, Ms. Lotz's permission, ruled the death a suicide. Ms. Lotz only spoke to authorities, the local sheriff, two days after his death on her, uh, on because she initiated a phone call. She called and spoke with the sheriff who said they could provide no information. Uh, she obviously knew uh, her son very well and that a suicide was out of the question as a cause of death. 
She hired an independent pathologist to conduct a second autopsy. That independent pathologist showed that it, in fact, was um, inconsistent with suicide. Then a jury was impaneled. That jury determined the cause of death was violence. It was not suicide. That was supposed to spark a second investigation moving from the sheriff and into the hands of the Missouri well, wait, wait. Highway. So, 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 so hold on one second. So hold on one second. Hold on one second. Hold on. I'm, I'm trying to, again, I'm following here. So um, Katie and Erica, you, you're telling me that a, a jury was in panel. Was that a grand jury by the DA? Yes. Yes. Yes, That's sir. Correct. Okay, so the DA, so so the DA impounded the grand jury. The yes, grand sir. jury said it was violence. Death by violence. Has the DA in so, so the DA hasn't indicted anybody? No. Well, sir. to this date, zero arrests have been made in the case of Duran. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm, I'm confused. I'm still confused here. <clears throat> The DA impaneled a grand jury, correct? Yes, of six members. It was the grand jury. The grand jury came back and said death by violence, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And 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 go ahead. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. I um. They told me that it was um death by violence and. They pretty much are going to leave it as a suicide. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, I'm, 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 um, again, I'm not a lawyer. I've covered enough cases, and and I'm, I, and I'm, I'm, Katie, I, I'm absolutely confused here. When a DA impanels a jury, a grand jury, and the grand jury come back, comes back and says death by violence, normally a DA indicts somebody or somebody gets arrested. Are, are you saying that the DA hasn't indicted anybody? This guy hasn't been arrested? Nobody's been arrested in a year? No. Yeah, so what's interesting about this case, and I think specifically, this is specific to Missouri state law, was that the jury was impaneled because of a coroner's inquest. That jury was essentially to review all of the uh, interviews, review the um, the outcomes of the autopsy, and then draw the conclusion if it was plausible that this was death by suicide or death by violence. Their determination that it was death by violence is what triggered then the case moving out of the sheriff's department and then being reassigned to the Missouri uh, State Highway Patrol, which is the way that the investigatory bodies sort of uh, begin to um, begin to escalate in the state of Missouri. So the case moved to the Highway Patrol. The Highway Patrol, uh, in theory, investigated. Uh, Ms. Lotz has been provided with very little information. All that we know is that the case has been closed that they determined also it was suicide, that no arrests were made, and that there are no charges being brought against anyone. Wow. Uh, so, Erica, that, that, that's it? That's just, their whole deal is, sorry? Yes. They didn't even say sorry. Um... I asked Sheriff Katie when I spoke to her about, um, could she tell me what happened? And she told me she couldn't tell me anything. And I said, so the only thing you can tell me is I have a dead son. And she told me exactly. The, there are, uh, there are multiple th this things is... in this. Katie, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, there's just... At every turn and with every sort of body of law enforcement that this case has moved through, there has been um, inconsistent work, to put it lightly. There has been a complete lack of transparency about who is doing what. 
And there has been, quite frankly, like a level of cruelty and callousness that Ms. Lotz has encountered. She has been told both by the sheriff and then by an officer within the Missouri Highway Patrol that the best thing for her to do was to accept the fact that her son committed suicide, which makes no sense given the fact that, again, to revisit, he had just had surgery on his dominant hand. So he was in a full cast. He was at the home of a known white supremacist who, and Roland, this is going to blow your mind, this is the second individual at this man's property who has allegedly died by suicide. There was another man named Nicholas Lowry a few years prior whose body was found at James Wade's property, shot in the head, and the coroner ruled it a suicide as well. So we have a pattern of behavior here. What, what, was, was, have, what, uh, was, was, was Nick, was, 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 was Nicholas Black? No. And it sort of, uh, I think that makes the, uh, a little bit more interesting, the story a little more interesting. Uh, he had closer ties or relationships with James Wade. Um, and it just sort of goes to show that there might be a level of comfortability of covering up crimes uh, at this particular individual's house. Well, um, I, I, I literally just astounded. Um, um, certainly keep us abreast, Erica and Katie, what happens. Uh, we certainly would do our part to, to elevate this. Uh, let us know if there are going to be any public rallies or demonstrations or anything around this case, because it's certainly, it, it's a lot of, it's a lot of folk I got, I got questions for. Yes, sir. I'm telling you, I mean, here's the thing, Roland, we are really sort of like, we don't want this to be the case in which Another black man in southern Missouri dies, and we just accept what people are saying is true, right. right? But that we are challenging this in a very loud, vocal, and public way. We want to drive people to the site, justicefordurante.com. We would love to see the federal department get involved to have this case completely moved out of Missouri so that we can have fresh eyes and actually get to the truth about what happened to this young man who was about to live his dream of playing college football and that we can get Ms. Lott's answers. We can't get her son back, but she certainly deserves peace of mind to know what happened to him. Katie, Erica, um, I thank you both. Uh, keep us in what happens. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having thank us. You. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Robert, Monique, Jason, I, this, man, I've heard some strange stories. I ain't never heard a situation where they, you impanel a grand jury and they conclude it was death by violence. Then all of a sudden the Mississippi Highway Patrol goes, I'm mean, sorry, Missouri Highway Patrol goes, ah, no, it was suicide. It, wow. I, I'll start with you, Robert. Uh, well, you know, I need, I need some more information because, like you were saying, this is a, a absolutely ridiculous case. And, and quite frankly, most forensic labs can very quickly tell uh, whether or not a gunshot wound was a suicide or not. Uh, you look at whether or not there was dust residue on the hands of the individual uh, who uh, committed suicide. Uh, you look at the angle of the interim wound and of the exit wound. Uh, you look at the type of ammo that was loaded, whether or not the individual owned a firearm, where the firearm came from, those sorts of things. So it's not really that difficult to find out whether or not the, a suicide did take place. In this case, it does sound like another situation where the death of a black boy is simply not being respected by America. You do not give them those same human rights. You do not put a second thought into it, and therefore you believe the kind of cockamamie story that it was a suicide. So I do think more information has to go into this. I think the, the uh, state of Missouri Justice Department, their attorney general, so launched an investigation into it. We saw in the Ahmaud Aubrey case uh, that it wasn't until the state stepped in and intervened that we saw an actual prosecution, and later on the conviction of the McMichaels and, uh, and the other individual in that case. So more information has to come to light, but the family absolutely has to continue fighting this going forward because there is, there's, there's more there than what we're seeing. Monique. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm very familiar with the with this case. I want to thank you, Roland, for taking the time uh, to amplify the work that Campaign Zero has been trying to do, which is really just has been screaming into the void about this case. Um, the, the Justice Department, as you know, it takes so much for them to be able to take cases on. So it really 
we have to have a continuous outcry where you can't, in cases like this, trust the state. There have been so many things to go wrong um, in Missouri, whether it's Ferguson or beyond, that we are seeing more and more of the same. Two important points. The the prosecutor for Madison County um, asked called this in this inquest, this which is a coroner's inquest because of the suspicious circumstances. So even though there was this coroner's report quickly saying suicide, he called for the inquest, maybe thinking that they would confirm that and quiet everybody down. But after listening to the testimony, this jury got together for two hours and came out and said, no, it was death by violence. Important to note, a, a neighbor testified in the inquest, and these are all public records saying that James Wade, the, the supremacist who owns this house, had all but confessed to him at a Walmart, you know, that it would be the easiest thing in the world for him to get away with if he had done it or something like that was the quote. I'm, I'm not using the exact language, but I'm pretty close to it. So we had that witness. We had others who were in the house who were saying, you know, that that it was unlikely that it happened in this way. We had his full cast on a dominant arm, and they're saying that a gun that wasn't his, that he somehow in the attic decided at 3 o'clock in the morning that it was time for him to end his life. Um, the family doesn't know what happened to the gun. The gun didn't belong to him. The, 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 the place where he died um, had been cleaned had been in some ways anesthetized. There, there, the scene was trampled. Um, there were a lot of people there. It was a party. So we, you know, we don't have pictures of exactly what happened or how he was found. To Robert's point, you would think that there would be some things that you would be able to tell, um, but they were not able to tell those things. And the second examiner said that the wound was not consistent with suicide, that the scene and the things were not consistent with suicide, but unreliable as well, because they they did this this first examination and then embalmed the body. So making it very difficult to be accurate in all scores on the second part. So this is one of those cases where um, if we could see that the police had done it, people would be all over it because, one, that that's considered a high-profile case. Two, there's a sure finish line for civil litigators on how somebody's going to get paid out of it. But instead, we've got a dead black boy who had his full life in front of him, and we've got this known white supremacist who seems to be either knowing way more than he's telling or, worst-case scenario, getting away with murder. And something absolutely um, needs to be done to let the Missouri law enforcement officials know that this is not going to go unanswered, that people are not going to just be quiet and go away. Absolutely stunning, Jason. I, I couldn't believe it. You know, I mean, I, I read about the case, um, but I couldn't believe hearing particularly that there was someone else who had committed suicide in a similar manner at this guy's house. I mean, that's literally the same, you know, uh, probability as getting struck by lightning three or four times. Um, it just doesn't add up. And the fact that they had a protest in that town, which was, uh, you know, in that area uh, of Missouri, which was home to a Ku Klux Klan member uh, who was killed by his wife a couple of years ago. And one of the things that happened at one of the protests for Durante was that people threw nooses at the protesters. So I think that when you take that all into account, you start to see why these charges aren't being filed. Why, you know, the things like the embalming of the body and, and all these kinds of things. It just reminded me kind of of Emmett Till, how they tried to bury him really quickly before the news got back to Chicago that he had been killed. Um, I, I cannot fathom you know, I've been trying to think of another explanation, and I know that there were people at the party who said it was a suicide. Um, now, if I were 17 or so, and I had seen or maybe been in an area where a young boy had been killed, maybe I would say it was suicide too, out of fear. Um, and I think that that needs to be taken into account as well. But this guy essentially confessed. I mean, this is, a, you know, a, a confession if I ever saw one. 
And yet, and we know he used, you know, uh, the N word. We know he didn't like black people. We saw the stuff that he put on the internet. And yet, I, you know, I can't believe with the death of a child that this guy is more than likely going to get away with it. it. It is unbelievable. And particularly when it's clear he was he died by violence. Uh, this has been corroborated by two different entities. And the fact that this isn't a nationwide story that people don't aren't screaming this from the rooftops. When you Google it, a couple of mainstream outlets have, a, you know, one or two articles about it. But it's not something that you're seeing on CNN or or any of these other things. But uh, if something has a little more ambiguity to it, they'll be all over it. But something that, from I think my perspective, looks pretty open and shut. Um, the fact that it's not getting the attention that it needs and that he is not getting the justice that he deserves is, is just so mind-blowing and so troubling. So, first of all, um, um, Monique, uh, this county, is this a largely white county? What oh, absolutely. 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 And and make no mistake. These people are afraid. These people are afraid. What was just said about the, the protesters when they would try to protest being bullied, all kinds of threats, all kinds of intimidation. Um, that is absolutely what is going on here. So basically, I, when law enforcement is telling a mama, you need to get over it. Uh, that really is, and and even in in the people um, within Campaign Zero who have been trying to get information and trying to put it out there, so much of the pushback has been people just in fear and not wanting to be lone voices um, that are speaking up and being left exposed to this kind of treatment for their families, uh, because there's frankly no way in the world, Roland that a uh, young, white, female, 19-year-old about to go be a star volleyball player or cheerleader at university ends up dead at, in the attic at a party and the entire world doesn't stop and try to figure out what happened. And there, and there are so many ugly layers um, to this. This is this is a situation, you know, where a young man had no involvement with drugs, yet they find low levels of meth in his system. And the, the prosecutor said, well, we could figure out who had meth. We could figure out maybe if someone was lacing something. But that's their job to figure that out. Almost cussed. That's their job to figure these um, things out. And they are not doing that. There simply is no. OK. I'm just using common sense. Ain't no black high school senior going to an all white party at the home of white supremacists. First of all, he ain't sticking around till 3 a.m. Second of all, how in the hell he getting at it? I mean, I just, I, I've been to many parties, okay? I'm not like, yo, let's go check out the attic. I, this, everything about this case is absolutely strange. And so, uh, old campaign zero continues it, um, um, it, protest, whatever, um, you know, we'll keep doing our part, but this is just, I'm literally have no idea what the hell I just heard that, that, that this is absolutely crazy. Who killed Durante Martin folks? Uh, there's a website, please go to it. Uh, and uh, that's just, wow. That's just unbelievable. All right, folks, back to that whole Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. Folks, Black Star Network is here. Hold no punches. A real uh, revolutionary right now. <laughs> Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. I thank you for being the voice of Black America, Roland. I love y'all. All momentum we have now. We have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig?